In this video, we're going to be looking at simplifying. Our objective, understand what simplifying is. Understand how to solve using simplifying. Our vocabulary. Simplify. Process of distributing and or combining like terms in a math problem. Basically, we're going to be using the two previous things that we've learned to make a problem much smaller and hence make it easier to solve. So first we need to practice the idea of simplifying. Now, when you simplify, you won't always distribute, you won't always combine like terms, but the simplifying process utilizes at least one of the two, sometimes both. We always distribute first because distributing is a form of multiplication and division. Combining like terms is a form of adding and subtracting. And we always multiply or divide before we add or subtract. Understanding the order of operations, we should get that. Alright, so I've got two problems. We're just going to practice doing these two things together. So first I have to look for any distributing. I'm going to take 2 and distribute inside the parentheses. It doesn't go over here because these aren't inside the parentheses. 8x plus 6 minus 6x plus 7. No more parentheses. We can combine like terms. 8x negative 6x. So 8 and negative 6 make 2x. Positive 6, positive 7 make positive 13. We've taken this long problem, turned it into this much shorter problem, and that's the idea of simplifying. Here we have two parentheses, meaning there will be two distribute, two times to, two times to distribute. Five goes in there. The x needs a one in front. Five times one is five x. Five times negative two is negative ten. Then we're going to take this negative three and distribute into the second parentheses. So negative 3 times 2 is negative 6x. Negative 3 times positive 4 is negative 12. And now we go back to our combining like terms. 5x, negative 6x, make negative 1x. Negative 10, negative 12, make negative 22. And again, much simpler than the original problem. Both of these, if they equaled something, would be now two-step problems to solve, and that's the idea. So now I'm going to use simplifying and the box method, followed by simplifying and the balance method, to show how we kind of integrate, use these things together. Now, you can use either the box or balance method for any problem that's been simplified. It's kind of a personal choice, so I'm going to show one of each. So here I want to simplify this problem. First thing I have to do is look for any distributing. There's a parentheses. I need to multiply by negative 4 because of the minus sign. So this is going to give me negative 8x. Negative 4 and negative 1 make positive 4. I just bring everything else down so the 3 comes in front positive 5x equals 1. Okay, from here, combine any like terms. I always like to combine my x's first. It typically um, helps me later on. So negative 8x, positive 5x would be negative 3x. 3 and positive 4 would make positive 7. And this equals 1. Now from here, I want to make a box so we can solve. By simplifying, we need a very small box. So first operation we'd do for x if we knew what x was. So we would multiply by negative 3. Then we would add 7 opposites. 
would be to minus 7 and divide by negative 3. So now we can find our answer by starting with 1. 1 minus negative 7, or 1 minus 7, sorry, would be negative 6. Negative 6 divided by negative 3 would be positive 2. All right, now let's look at how we can use simplifying and the balance method together. I've done a little bit longer problem on this one, but both methods work for both um, situations. So long, short, you can use balance or box for either one. The key is, if there's more than one variable in the problem, simplify first. So we want to distribute. Now we've got to distribute negative 2. Be very careful here. Negative 2 and negative 5 make positive 10 there. Now we want to combine any like terms. So 12x and negative 4x are going to give us 8x. Then we've got negative 9, positive 10 give us positive 1. And this equals negative 16. Okay, so now we just balance method this. Last thing we do is minus 1, so or plus 1, so I'm going to minus 1 on both sides. And the last thing we do here is divide by 8. So this one doesn't divide perfectly, so I can either write it as the fraction negative 17 over 8, or I can use a calculator and turn this into a decimal. So I'm going to do that also. So that would be negative 2.125. All right, this has been simplifying and how it can help us with solving. If there's any part of it that you didn't understand or you need to watch again, make sure you pause. Rewind and rewatch and bring your questions to class. Thank you.